Alright, you're gonna be messing with the exhaust valves today. Just clean them all, clean up all that gunk and see if I got time to do the, uh, the valve lapping as well. All I'm really worried about is the actual seat itself around the circumference. They're right around there where it actually seals up against the, uh, the seat in the underhead. Just right now I'm getting all the gunk off. 140,000 miles worth of gas. Go away. Got them all uh, polished up. Just gonna make sure the circumference of these bitches feel okay. Not bad. Yeah, brass wire wheel. Brass because it's softer. A few steel, these things would have been toothpicks. So when I took the valves out, I was checking out all the seats. I've already ground uh, cylinder one down. These seats are all pitted. The valves as well are all pitted. So I figured I might as well go through and grind them all down. Clean up first the uh, brass wire wheel, my drama. This part, I'm just going to be breezing through. I'm not going to try to act like I know what I'm doing. Just want to show you guys the process on the valve grinding for this. There's a lot of good videos out there, a lot of good information you can read about if you are interested in doing your own valve grinding. And I invite you to do that. It's actually not that difficult. It's just super tedious, especially if you're using that little suction cup tool. Make sure you go back and use that Prussian blue stuff to ensure your seal is good to go 360 degrees. So I ran into a conundrum because my kit gave me all these parts but it never specified which one was which here's your intake ones here these bronze ones and then these silver ones are your exhaust ones Okay, there's the exhaust valves. Everything's good to go. No retainers lost. If this was an L series, I'd be done. But it's a fucking 2JZ brother, so I got 12 more. This is the reason why that I did my valves seals. So this is all on the inside. Look at these things. They're had. Done, son. Got all the intake valves, hardware out. Not sure that the lapping is going to be that difficult on these. They are bigger valves too, so the suction cup can hold on to them pretty damn well. Yeah, I'm going to have to go back, clean up all those old uh, O-rings from the seals. At this point, I've already cleaned off my intake valves, and I've ground the seats and the valves. Now I'm going to go back and ensure that my seats are perfectly square and going to make a good seal. You do that by using this Prussian blue stuff. You put in the outer circumference of that valve and then whenever you press it firmly back into the head, pull it off. Then you want to make sure that Prussian blue has squeezed out all along your seal. You do that just to check to make sure it's not uneven. If it is uneven, then your seal's bad and your head's not going to be doing its job with the valves. The process for installing your valve seals and all the valve hardware, that's the same between the intake and exhaust. I'm not going to show that again. That would be redundant. So all the valves and springs, retainers, all that stuff, all back in. Just going to flip her over, clean up all the combustion chamber area of all this old oil. 
The shims in the bucket on the 2JZ is what gives the valve its clearance from the camshaft. When you reinstall the buckets, make sure that it is the same one from when you removed it. Otherwise, you are going to ruin your valve clearance. Alrighty, so I'm going to slap on all these buckets here. Really hope I have all these in the same spot as they were. But I was reading, you don't have to remove the camshaft. They have a tool in the manual that states to use. You can just rotate the camshaft so the lobes are up. Swap out your shim. I realize I'm giving a middle finger. And then you'll be able to press the, the bucket itself right here. Press that down and then swap that shim out. Alrighty, so I'm going to start threading in all the head studs and everything, get all those lined up. Fun fact, this little space right here that sits in the bottom of the block is the same one that was in my KX250 whenever I was redoing that cylinder, the jug, uh, redoing the top end. The jug sits on a thing, a little alignment sleeve just like this, and it's the same exact one. Cleaning the deck as best as I can before I throw the gasket and the head on. When you get your head studs, make sure you clean them up before you throw them in. The threads are going to be all dusty, and the studs themselves are going to be oily. Make sure you use that assembly lubricant on your threads. What I did with the studs, put them in hand tight, took my tool, brought it down to snug, went back, and then from there, hand tight as best as I could. And the head gasket can only go on one way. So I want to put the washers in first before I put the studs through. Once you get your head on, you're going to notice real quick there's not that much space to mess with putting on washers because the studs poking through. So I put them on first. I've also seen it, the guy putting the head on first before the studs. I'm not about that life. Alrighty, can fit the head. According to this, torque recommendations recommend a torque sequence tighten nuts in three equal steps to 80 foot pounds. Let's do 60. Now 80. After that last torque sequence of 80 foot pounds, I went back to double check my torque. Everything's good to go. Up next is going to be the camshaft and then the rest of the long block assembly. Thanks again for watching all.